I'm here for Route 66, the most famous road in the world. How many other roads do you know that people sing about? And it's just one of those magical places that you always long to see. Ever since I was a wee boy in Glasgow, I fantasised about getting my kicks on Route 66. Oh, my God! To me, it was a magic trail heading west through the heart of America <laughs> into the land of broken dreams and Hollywood endings. The highway that built a continent defined a nation running from Chicago to L.A. Route 66 is the story of America written by the people for the people. Over eight states and two and a half thousand miles. I love that. It's a tale in tarmac of presidents and paupers, cowboys and Indians, diners and drive throughs framed in a landscape from a hundred movies with a soundtrack of the greatest music in the world. Rock and roll. Sounds good, doesn't it? Oh my god. Whoa! <laughs> We're going to have lots of fun. Meet lots of people, see lots of nice things. Come with me. Let's take a walk on the wrong side. Where it goes from St. Louis, Jack, ah, ah. Oklahoma City looks so, so pretty, you see. This leg of Route 66 is going to take me to the beating heart of Middle America. It's a lovely day in Kansas today. There's going to be wild dogs. Having a nice bit of rat in the morning, I've always felt. Sassy, brassy hunters. What do you want me to shoot? Obsessive compulsives. Oh, God! <laughs> a soul-singing legend. And the biggest <laughs> rocking chair you have ever seen. Starting in St. Louis, I'm going to motor west 600 miles to Oklahoma City through the Bible Belt and away into cowboy country. First on my to-do list, the most impressive collection of rivets, girders and steel you've ever seen. If you're ever in St. Louis, you'll see this thing behind me. It's the Gateway Arch. It's a bit like being in Paris with the Eiffel Tower. You keep seeing it from unexpected angles. It keeps coming into your view when you least expect it. It was designed by a man called Eero Saarinen, who usually did airport terminals and stuff. And I know it sounds very anarchy, but there's 900 tonnes of stainless steel in there. He says he designed it like an upside-down necklace, and it's a tribute to the great explorers and hunters and trappers of the West. And as you know, they always wore a wee single-strand necklace and a twin set underneath all that rawhide gear in case an unexpected social event should show up, you know. You'd be expected you'd be invited to a dance in the Apple. <laughs> you'd be invited to a dance in the Outback. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and inside this, this hollow, and there's a, 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 a tramway thing. I don't know exactly what they were talking about when I read the information, but there's a mode of transport to the top of it, and you shall come with me, and you will be the better for it. Well, I've never been inside a monument before. We're in the dark. And this is called a cantilever tramway. It's kind of weird, really. There's nothing much to see, except rivets and girders. Oh, I can see a stairway. I saw a stairway and a fire extinguisher. Welcome to the top, everyone. Please go on your laptop stairs. You can now count me in as one of the four million people that visit this viewing platform every year. Oh, there's two river boats down there. See them? The paddle steamers. That's the mighty Mississippi, old muddy. 
You spend your whole life as a child learning about these things, and then it's M-I-S-S-I-S-S-I-P-P-I. You never dream that one day you're going to be up the top of a huge monument looking down on it. Isn't life the strangest thing? And I've been here for ages and not one person has asked me to spell Mississippi. I'm so disappointed. But the whole point of this is to look west, because St. Louis was the gateway to the west. Straight ahead there must be where the Cardinals play, the St. Louis Cardinals. I've been trying to find it, I think I've spotted it. Is it? I've just been informed that it's not, it's not it at all. Come here. I was completely wrong about the Cardinal Stadium. It's there. And when I was telling you we were looking west, we were looking east, I would make a lousy explosion. <laughs> don't, don't follow me. Follow men, we're going that way. Now, if I asked you to have a look at some public art, you might be tempted to turn your TV off, but stick around. St. Louis does it differently. You'll have often heard people saying, oh, America's got everything. In actual fact, they're quite right. And I've got the absolute proof for you, and it's right over here. It's a bidet for joggers. As you notice over here, the man is striding manfully through a line of bidets which will get rid of his sweaty crutch problem instantly. Oh, America. But you see that face? You see that sculpture? It's a head lying on its side. If you look in the eyes of that, that sculpture, you'll see little faces looking out. Are you OK? OK. It seems to become very tactile and accessible because it's abstract. Isn't that lovely, the way people feel entitled to go up and touch that art? I love that. I absolutely love it. Good on you, St. Louis. I mean, how many times have you been in town and you've seen a statue of some dreary old curmudgeon standing there in his frock coat with children clambering over it? They actually scare children. The only things they don't seem to scare are seagulls and pigeons. But look at that. That's alive and well. Watch this. <laughs> Wouldn't it be wonderful if just for one day all the sidewalks in the world were like that? <laughs> Not bad, eh? Don't you miss those days when you didn't mind being soaking wet, didn't care about a change of clothes? <laughs> Hamburgers, fries, hot dogs. It's an unfortunate truth that road food is not exactly good for your taste buds or your colon. So when you get the chance to eat real soul food prepared by a real soul queen, you shake your tail feather and get to Sweetie Pie's restaurant pronto. Hi! Oh, Billy Conley, how lovely to meet you, Robbie. Oh. What a privilege. This is Miss Robbie Montgomery, the equally formidable and beautiful owner of Sweetie Pie. Make sure you guys cut those greens up because we were eating greens and like a whole leaf, like jungle weed. <laughs> like some jungle weed. Uh, cut them up. But if there's something in her sass that makes you think you might have seen her before, take a look at this. Because Robbie used to be one of Ike and Tina Turner's legendary Ikeettes. Those amazing backing singers that used to tear up the stage in the 60s. Yeah, Tina, I saw you before you were going on that. Shaking my tail feather. <laughs> that was my favourite, shaking the tail feather. Really? Shaking the tail feather. The tail feather is broke. I can't <laughs> shake it anymore. <laughs> I've gotten too old for that. Oh, river Deep Mountain High. Yes, yes. These days, she's much more famous for her soul food, which is supposed to be the best in Missouri. So, Billy, you kind of pick up the tray. I'm going to give you a lesson in soul uh, food. Oh, good. I've never I'll had soul enjoy. food before. You, this is your first? It's my first Oh, uh, I'm glad it's my restaurant that you're trying for the first time. This is Billy, ladies, and you take care of them, even though we take care of everybody. I'm looking forward to this. Oh, 
collard greens. Can I have some of that? And he's got to try the macaroni and cheese. Of course he does. <laughs> Here we call this Mississippi style cooking because all of these are my mom's recipes. Well, you grew up lucky. Okay, good. So yeah. is that a approval? I love this, it's delicious. Oh. All right, good. That makes me feel proud and I'm sure my mom is happy. Mm -hmm. She's turning over. <laughs> <laughs> I had to eat it. All right, I told you. <laughs> I always order mac and cheese when I can to see if it's as good as mine. Okay, is it? Just a little bit off, huh? All right, well, I can't, I don't want to beat you. Just put me in the race. <laughs> but this is a highlight for me. The collard, collard greens. greens. See, that's a big green right there. It's a big lump That should have been cut up. Yeah. <laughs> See, those little things like that that I have to go in the back and say, why didn't you cut those greens up? I don't think I'd like you to be my boss. I think you'd be a mighty, oh, a mighty I, I'm boss. You should hear me some days. <laughs> uh, oh, really? I got a vocabulary that I can't use all the time. Me too. Okay. <laughs> Bitching in the That's kitchen. Right. Bitching in the kitchen, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Thanks for the music too. Oh, good. So you would actually sing and rehearse and cook as well? Oh, yeah, because everything was segregated back there. Yeah. So there wasn't a lot of places for the black people to eat, yeah. so we had electric skillets and we would get in the hotel rooms and, and cook. It's very difficult to believe, isn't it, segregation? Yeah, that's right, and it's still going on. I mean, it's not as prevalent, but it's still happening. I remember the day my son came home and said, Mom, what's a nigger? And I'm like, who told you that? I knew somebody told him because I had never said anything about that to him. He's like two or three years old. But, I mean, as you go and you learn to ignore their ignorance because I'm in a place in my life at 70. I'm happy just to be here. As long as we love each other, that, that's where I'm at. That's the beginning, the middle and the end, isn't right, it? it is. Before you go. Give me a love, thank you. All right, oh, thank you so much. I love you. Thank you, I love you more. God bless you. Just once. All right. <laughs> With my belly full of mac and cheese, it's time to leave the city limits and head into Missouri. This is real Bible Belt country, a lush state peppered with churches and gun-toting hunters. Which is ironic because my first port of call is a wolf sanctuary. After years of systematic slaughter, wolves are now nearly extinct in these parts. But thanks to people like my guide, Regina, real efforts have been made to turn that trend around. Where's my wolves? Oh, we've got them for you. <laughs> <laughs> we have um, 40 wolves at the Endangered Wolf Center. We're very unique because we don't pet the animals, we don't talk to them, we don't play with them. We want them to keep that fear of humans so when they go into the yes. wild, they stay away from people. Well, you want to help us feed a deer to one of our packs? Yeah. All right, this is for you. That's for me, what do I do with it? It's your protection stick. The wolves won't come up to you, but it's just a safety just to have it. If you feel threatened, you can wave it if they try to come up to you. But like I said, wolves stay far away from us. So you'll see them, they're gonna be at the back of the enclosure. Right. Okay. <laughs> My protection stick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure wolves are terrified of white sticks. <laughs> And this guy was frozen, so it'll be a deer popsicle form. So this guy was hit by a car. I can see that. Yeah, he broke a leg. And it's nice that he's not gonna go to waste. You know, the wolves yeah. get to practice you know, eating their natural prey. We'll, we'll go out this way and let them get their dinner. Even though we're on the outside of the enclosure right now, they're still nervous that we're here. That's how much they're afraid of people. That's extraordinary. That really takes me by surprise. Mm. <laughs> oh. And now it's his. <laughs> He's peed on it. Maybe that was his way of defrosting it. <laughs> they're really wishing we weren't here, aren't they? They are. They're, they're ready to go for dinner, and 
and we're making them nervous. I like the way they stop and look straight at us. Mm -hmm. I never expected them to be so tender and scared, you know? When you think of the kind of reputation a wolf has for being terrifying and attacking human beings, it's just nonsense. <laughs> While we leave the wolves to enjoy the lunch. Yes. Look at this. I'm checking you out. Regina introduces me to African wild dogs that they also breed here. Oh, a pig's ear. A pig's ear and a rat. Pig's ear and a rat. Yum -o. <laughs> Making you hungry for lunch? Mmm, 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 mmm. <laughs> it was like an Easter egg. You get to place it wherever you want to. Are you gonna just leave it anywhere here? Yep, you can put it wherever you want. Perfect. You hear him howling? Oh, that's the coolest noise. I don't know if I'd like it if I was in my tent. <laughs> that was a great noise. That's made my day. Isn't that cool? Not very many people have heard the, the sounds of howls. What's amazing about these guys is these guys share. So what happens when they have puppies is they'll have a babysitter stay back and watch the puppies. No. Yeah. And what they do is when they make the kill, they'll eat and they'll actually come back and regurgitate not only for the puppies, but for the babysitter. So it's really a one for all, all for one system. It's nothing like a nice bit of rat in the morning, yeah. I've always felt. They save the tail for last, that's the best part. I, I always do. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing like it, a bit of rat in the pig's ear for a wee snack in the morning. There's a lot to do in a Sunday afternoon in the fabulous green state of Missouri. You could fix your tractor, you could stuff an animal, maybe even have a barbecue, or you could get on the blower, call some mates, find an empty field, dress up like an extra from Pirates of the Caribbean and play with some very big guns, all to mark the 150th anniversary of the American Civil War. Well, there's 11 southern states versus 25 northern states. And you know, the funniest thing is, everybody thinks it was about slavery, but the argument goes on today as to whether it was or not. Abraham Lincoln thought it was about slavery. It's a very complex issue, and it sells millions of books every year. People dedicate their life to the study of the Civil War. 625,000 men died. It's the saddest war of all because the, some of the people involved didn't actually know what they were fighting for. And as I say, some people today don't even know what it was really about. But as you can see, very few people fall down. I think it's the one failing of re reenactment. Everybody wants to be in it for the whole day. Nobody wants to die in the first five minutes and lie there for the whole day, unless the sun shines. And you can die face up, and get a good tan. There's <laughs> a dead guy lying just there. I think he might be asleep. <laughs> Surrendering and he's a blue coat. Again. Again, he did that the first time. He's got a bigger rag out there now. Get out of here, you big Jesse! <laughs> Fight like a man! <laughs> did you win? Yes. But I thought the Union side was supposed to win today. Uh, no, this is the Battle of Blackwell. The Battle of Blackwell, yeah, and, that and, was, uh, and that was won by the Confederates. Yeah. And is it quite accurate? Uh, I mean, just for insurance reasons, we can't pull rammers. So when you've got to reload one of these things, you've got to tap load it. When properly done, you know, they're 
Yes, loading. all that stuff. But, you know, anything can happen in the heat of battle and people get scared. Next thing you know, you somebody's left a ramrod in there and, and they fire the ramrod. Fire at fires, the ramrod. Which happened a lot in the real wars. Really? Oh, yeah. Quite often. You'd have somebody that would... Hello, man. Would, how are you doing? Really? Like, are you part of a society? Basically, yeah. 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 And do you practice these things? Yes. Oh, yes. Some, sometimes it will work for six months just to get everything right. The gear, the clothes, the attitude. And that's your hobby? Yeah, one of them. Or, as the wife says, obsession. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, it's been a real pleasure. You'd be stay safe. Don't go firing those ramrods no, at no, each no. other. No, no, no. no, no. no. <laughs> There are an awful lot of tourist attractions along Route 66. From the lofty heights of the Grand Canyon all the way to this big blue whale made of concrete. But it would appear the place that's most heavily advertised is Merrimack Caverns. Every few miles there's a billboard urging me to take a look. Is it worth it? Let's find out. Welcome to the Merrimack Caverns. This is one of the most famous stop-offs on Route 66. And it's a wee bit showbiz, as you can see from the neon. Lester Dill bought the place and decided to make it into a tourist attraction when, gasp, he found some artefacts belonging to Jesse James. I came to the conclusion that this was the James Gang hideout. Very convenient. Jesse James the Outlaw has a bit of a Robin Hood-like reputation in Missouri. And according to this recently uncovered bit of archive, Hot day. Yeah, he was also a fastidious house cleaner. Great racehorse, that skyrocket. Kind of dusty, though. Which ultimately may have contributed to his untimely death. Jesse turned his back. It was his last mistake. If there's a power cut in here, we might have to eat one another. What I find baffling is that for all the neon signs and James Gang artefacts, the real highlight of the cave is nature. Built up over millions of years, these beautiful formations are barely mentioned in the advertising. Extraordinary. Look at this one. I've never touched a stalactite before. I've got you a kind of wee special treat. It's a bit touristy, but I think you'll like it. It's kind of charming, but it's a bit like the Wizard of Oz, you know, when you see behind all the magic there's a wee man working all the levers and buttons. He's very good at it, though. There's a tackiness about Route 66 that outtacks any tackiness I ever saw anywhere. I just don't understand why people think a thing as staggeringly beautiful needs a light show to make it any better than it is. It's amazing how that naturally occurred, that Stars and Stripes. This is an excellent view of the death of Route 66. You see that there? That's the interstate highway. And that's the thing that took all the business away from here. They keep trying different things, but it's slowly dying. And it's been decommissioned as a highway anyway. It's got all different numbers and names and it's kind of broken up. So you can whoosh along there and see very little. Or you can creep along here and see lots. People have built all manner of daft things along Route 66. They're designed to lure you out of your car and into their shop. But this beats them all. Welcome to Fanning, Missouri and the biggest rocking chair in the whole world. The rockers are <laughs> the rockers are 32. <laughs> Excuse me, <laughs> it's so ridiculous. The rockers are 32 feet long. <laughs> it's got one great failing. It, it doesn't rock. <laughs> that was wonderful. 
<laughs> what a lovely thing. Whose idea was it? That's mine. Oh, well done. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. The giant rocker is the brainchild of the Sanazaro family who own the 66 outpost. <laughs> a treasure trove of all manner of stuff. This doesn't seem right when we've just been to see the protection will of the wolves. <laughs> and if those wolves don't behave, not least Missouri hospitality. Will I be able to draw that back? Yeah, well, I gotta set it on five pounds for you. <laughs> <laughs> They've invited me to go hunting for wild turkey tomorrow, but not before they put my archery skills to the test. Put that top pin right there on. The top pin? Yep. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> That's why you gotta put your finger behind it. <laughs> Pull her back there. There you go. Oh, I see. Perfect. There you go. <laughs> nice. <Look> shot. That. <laughs> you got You're a natural. Back. Yeah. Isn't it? That's quite good. That's a good shot. That's a four ring. Let's go to the back and shoot an animal. <laughs> <laughs> I got target target animals. Purple to the elk there. Yeah. Put it right behind the front leg. Okay. Well, it's been my experience when, when you fire at targets. Did I get it? Yeah, perfect shot. You want the real thing eventually. Oh, right in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> That makes it that jump. Hurt. That makes it jump, and you get it. Poof. <laughs> you know, if you're in the army and you shoot at targets, and the, and, the, and the target is that guy like this. There's your bullseye. See, see that ring right there? Yeah. And you have a go, um, and then after a bit, maybe a hundred shots, you think, I wonder how it would be with a real guy who shoots back. That was real kind of you, man. Thanks very much. You're welcome. My Hawkeye skills honed, I'm off to meet the rest of the family, including my hunting guides, twin sisters, Carolyn and Sherry. Welcome. Thank you very much. <laughs> 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 Something's happened to my eyes. Billy, this is my twin sister, Sherry. Hello, Hello. Sherry. <laughs> nice to meet you. You kept that secret. <laughs> Me or your turkey you guys <laughs> for tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Are well, you both coming? Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh yippee. Okay. Oh, look at this. It's beautiful, isn't it? Is there turkey in Europe? In no, no wild ones. None. No. Well, you're in for a treat tomorrow. I hope we can call a couple up close and... Well, yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> We're going to be hunting right over there. There's a ridge over there, and <laughs> that's where I've been hearing them. So. Yeah, how are you going to be doing it? Are you doing it with a gun or a bow? What do you want me to shoot? I've got both. Yeah, whatever you like. <laughs> it is I. It's 5 a.m. I'm in a garage in Cuba, Missouri, and I'm dressed to kill. I hope turkeys are pretty stupid because <laughs> we don't look like woodland creatures at all. It's just like a five-minute walk. I've never hunted wild turkey before, and there does seem to be quite a lot to get my head around. The twins have set up two tents opposite each other. The idea is that Sherry hides in one to lure the turkey by making some noises. <laughs> then, once it's in range, Carolyn will shoot it with her bow. Well, that's the theory. That's a turkey, isn't it? Yeah. It was very far away. Yeah. He wants us to go to him. He's playing real hard to get. Yeah, he's across the river. Sometimes, if they get excited enough, they'll fly across the river. Yeah? Yeah, but sometimes it's late in the afternoon before they'll do that. I don't think you can check. 
charge through the year with all these big lights <laughs> and expecting us out. My bed was so warm. <laughs> and as dawn breaks on another beautiful Missouri morning, so does our patience. I'm beginning to suspect turkey sandwiches are no longer on the menu. Try that again. Whatever was out there, they're gone now. <laughs> what are we doing? So what do you think of wild turkey hunting in Missouri? <laughs> I'm sure it'll be wonderful when I see it. That's why they call it hunting and not killing. Absolutely. <laughs> was an experience. Yeah, it's a great experience. My hat's a great experience, too. <laughs> I was absolutely delighted that the turkeys got away. I don't know what, what I would, quite how I would have reacted if we had killed one. I had no intention of killing a turkey. I, I'm not in the killing business. But I like being out, I like, I like being in the woods, and I like being with those women. They were lovely, they were lovely company. I'll never forget that, those lovely people of Missouri. I'm on my way from Fanning to Springfield, Missouri. Now, you need to keep your wits about you on Old 66. There are some states where it's really well signposted. Missouri isn't one of them. There are, however, a few other signs to read as you write. There's a big billboard there and all it says is Jesus. That, there's a church there called the Change of Heart Church. The first church of God, Refiner's Fire Apostolic Church, and here's another one. God, I've never seen so many churches in my life. This is the Bible Belt. Your own personal Jesus. God Almighty is another one. Someone to hear your prayers. Someone who cares. God, I'm thinking they've got a church each. God's gonna get you. God's gonna get you. And them demons is gonna get you. Demons. I watched a woman on television yesterday saying she had ascended into heaven and had fought demons. There were dragons, red and black, and God gave her a sword and she slew them. And she can teach you how to do it if you just buy her CD for $25. Reach out and touch me. Apparently, this is a real treat. I'm going to see a man's collection, a man called Rob Larvey, who's been collecting all his life. The next time you'll see me, I'll be in there, inside. He doesn't want any evidence of where the collection is because it's not for anybody else, it's just for him. And phew, I can't wait. Let's go. Well, oh, you must be Rob. You must be Billy. How no lovely you to look, meet you, Rob. You look just like yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I just saw the zithers. Oh, yeah. I'm one of the few zither collectors probably in the world that I know of anyway. These two here are interesting. They were made in uh, July of 1890, consecutive serial numbered. One's 3674 and one's 3675. <laughs> Zithers and serial numbers? Welcome to the weird and wonderful world of the male obsessive. That is a fancy, fancy schmancy one. According to Rob, collecting stuff is a uniquely American male trait. It starts young with baseball cards, and before you know it, you've a room after room after room full of stuff. Oh my God. I've got one of the largest, if not the largest collection of lap steels in the world. Goodness sake. Then more stuff. God. I thought I'd seen the collection. Oh no. <laughs> it, it just gets more insane the oh, further you go. Oh my God. And then, my well, God, you get even more. <laughs> I'm sorry for laughing. It's just it's crazy, isn't it? It's <laughs> just beyond. <laughs> You've got a bad. 
I know. <laughs> I do. And for those of you that are thinking of cloning John Lennon... Yes, Beatle fans, yesterday your trouble seemed so far away, so come together now and discover what millions have before, that love is all you need, to experience what magic their mop tops brought to others, the heart of the 60s still beats. Actually contains a lock of hair from one of the Fab Four. My God. Considering he's a man with a mystery address, it would be rude to ask how Rob supports his need to collect. But collect he does. Like gravity, his need for stuff is a force of nature. In here is medicine bottles. I also collect tobacco tans. It just doesn't stop. I collect tweed suitcases. I got a couple hundred you tweed do? suitcases. Yeah. I never sell anything. So all of a sudden you have 200 <laughs> of them. You know? Why do you never sell anything? Don't you sort of try to make room and change and... No, I just expand. Just keep... Oh, look at your ukuleles. These are Fender Coronados. I've got 50 of them now. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm still buying them if the price is right. <laughs> I got 50 of them. Oh, my God. I never met anyone like you before. Um, I tell people when they ask who I am, I say, well, I'm an obsessive, compulsive, manic, depressive, eccentric, eclectic. Or eclectic, eccentric. It depends on what day it is. <laughs> they just sit around waiting for you to phone, don't they, the guys? It's madness. <laughs> it certainly is. Well, that is what you call a collection. And I thought I had too much stuff at home, but I've got hardly anything. I'm crossing the state line into Kansas. Route 66 only passes through a wee section of Kansas, just 13 miles. That'll be three states down and five to go. This is Galena, Kansas. I don't think I would be too far out in saying that there's best days are behind it. Forget the banks gone under on Wall Street. This is a real face of economic crisis in America. Abandoned stores, homes under foreclosure, and no work. Swap meat might be worth a look. It would appear the only thing flourishing in this part of Kansas is car boot sales. <laughs> Hello, do you mind if we look at your stuff? Go right ahead. Thanks very much. Are you, are you selling those chickens and all? Yeah. How much does a chicken cost? A lot of people sell them for fifteen dollars a piece when they're grown and laying eggs. Yeah. Uh, anywhere from eight to fifteen dollars. Eight to fifteen bucks. Yeah. As much as a duck. Uh, ducks are five. <laughs> because they grow quicker than chickens do. Oh, look at the wee chickadees. It's a lovely day in Kansas today. Hello. Hello. Are you a Grateful Dead fan? No. <laughs> I used to make these. Oh, yeah. <laughs> used to sell them, but they're kind of dead right now. Yeah, I've got long johns like that. <laughs> and I'm very proud of them. I'm a deadhead and proud of it. Come in, look. It's all cheap. We don't sell nothing expensive here. I'm, I'm trying to liquidate stuff. Everything's like 10 cents. We're just giving it away. Really? <laughs> There's a scarecrow who means what he says. <laughs> well, welcome to welcome to the United States. Well, you'll find a variety of interesting stuff around along old Route 66. There's yeah. Quite a bit of history here. Yeah. What's that? That is an old German piece. I acquired a, a small collection of German military memorabilia. Uh, from an elderly gentleman in Joplin who brought them back from Germany during the war. Well, this is a, uh, a, a German dagger, and this old banner was also the same gentleman oh, liberated, liberated this banner from a building in Germany during World War II, yeah. and it remained in Joplin ever since, but uh, I don't 
I don't really keep this kind of stuff. I do buy it and sell and trade it when I find it, but I'm not really a big fan of it. No, I'm not due a fan to, of it myself. Due to the history behind it. But uh, I've, uh, I've always picked up anything unusual or unique. Of course, you may not want to see that. You may not want to film that particular bumper sticker. It, it, uh, Obama sucks. Oh, I like but, uh, him. I think he's great. Well, I know, I know a lot of people from uh, other countries think he's absolutely wonderful, but... Uh, what about the killing of Osama? Well, the, you know, he's taking full credit for that, but uh, he's not greatly liked at this point. Well, thanks for your time. Yes, yes, enjoy your stay. Yeah, thanks for allowing yeah. me to rumble through your stuff. There's something about a swastika that just stops me in my tracks. That's the second one I've seen in a few weeks. I saw one in Scotland. And it just, it does something deep inside me. It scares the bejesus out of me. I get unsettled. Everybody's talking at me. I don't hear words saying. I've crossed the state line into my fourth state, Oklahoma. It's 300 miles to Oklahoma City, and I'm keen to get there before it gets dark. People stop and stare. Because I'm heading for the site of the Oklahoma bombing, now a national memorial. It's something I really want to see, but in all honesty, I'm not really sure how it's going to make me feel. This is the site of the Alfred P. Murrah building, where in 1995, on April 19th, Timothy McVeigh drove up with a truckload of explosive and blew the building up. He was a kind of reactionary. He was an ex-American soldier who was all right-wing and screwed up about government and how evil government was. And there's a few guys like that here with that kind of militia-mindedness, you know. And this is the memorial to the tragedy that he, that, that he created. 168 people died, including 16 children. We're, we're very, very close here to where he parked his, his truck. It's just about halfway down here. He loaded it up with explosives and had built a cage inside the truck so as it would blow towards the front of the building. He really put that much thought into it. These chairs, there's 168 chairs representing each one of the dead. That's Kathleen Louise Cregan. This is a child one. Ashley Megan Eccles. I wonder who these people were. There's another child one here, you see? Another one, oh, there it is. They're lit. And although it was a federal building, there was also a crash in here. And children all playing, having a nice time. It's every bit as powerful as I thought it might be. This says it all. It's a funny thing, it gives it a kind of strange life, doesn't it? It gives the people a life that will never go away. That light. Just one of those great American tragedies. I'm glad we came here. It was funny, it was all stormy a few minutes ago. We thought we wouldn't be able to come. It was such a building up to be a big storm, and now we're here, it's very, very calm. It is so deeply moving. They should be immensely proud of it in Oklahoma a fitting tribute to those innocent people who died. <laughs>